Recently, I ran a poll on the channel where I asked you guys, how close do you think we are to a technological singularity? Now most of you said we are either more than 5 or 10 years away from that actually happening, but there were 14% of you who said we're already here. Now while I myself remain relatively unsure, there is an absolute fire hose of AI news right now that's making it seem like the 14% of you who said we're already in the singularity might be right. Well that stream of news continued this week with the release of perhaps one of the craziest papers on AI since the release of ChatGPT. That paper was put out by Jun Sung Park and others from Stanford as well as Carrie J. Kai and Meredith Morris of Google Research, and it's titled, Generative Agents, Interactive Simulacra of Human Behavior. Now if that headline is confusing to you, just know that we are about to dive into a paper on the first iteration of ChatGPT being used to make believable simulated humans. Yes, you heard that right. Now before we dive in, welcome to my channel TFC Tech where we discuss fascinating topics surrounding science and technology. If you want to stay up to date on the latest and most insane stories in AI, hit that subscribe button and the like button, it really helps the channel out. But without further ado, let's get started. Now to get you up to speed on the basics of this paper, let's read the introduction. Believable proxies of human behavior can empower interactive applications ranging from immersive environments to rehearsal spaces for interpersonal communication to prototyping tools. In this paper, we introduce generative agents, computational software agents that simulate believable human behavior. Generative agents wake up, cook breakfast, and head to work. Artists paint, while authors write. They form opinions, notice each other, and initiate conversations. They remember and reflect on days past as they plan the next day. To enable generative agents, we describe an architecture that extends a large language model to store a complete record of the agent's experiences using natural language, synthesize those memories over time into higher level reflections, and retrieve them dynamically to plan behavior. We instantiate generative agents to populate an interactive sandbox environment inspired by The Sims, where end users can interact with a small town of 25 agents using natural language. In an evaluation, these generative agents produce believable individual and emergent social behaviors. For example, starting with only a single user-specified notion that one agent wants to throw a Valentine's Day party, the agents autonomously spread invitations to that party over the next few days. They make new acquaintances, ask each other out on dates to the party, and coordinate to show up for the party together at the right time. We demonstrate through ablation that the components of our agent architecture observation, planning, and reflection, each contribute critically to the believability of agent behavior. By fusing large language models with computational interactive agents, this work introduces architectural and interaction patterns for enabling believable simulations of human behavior. So I know that's a lot to digest, but don't worry, we're gonna break it all down and dive in deeper into this insane paper. This paper centers around the creation of what they call generative agents, these generative agents are the fusion of large language models and memory architecture, which are used to simulate virtual humans. You can think of them as kind of NPCs that instead of being scripted, can formulate their own thoughts and make their own decisions. We'll get more into how they work exactly a bit later, but for now let's explore the simulation. The paper starts off by showing us this sandbox mentioned in the introduction that was inspired by the video game The Sims. If you've never played it, it's essentially a life simulator game where you build an environment for a bunch of NPCs. As you can see, it's a retro style small town complete with houses, a cafe, a supermarket, and other structures you would find in any small city. If you look at the boxes though, it highlights the sprites of the characters. One is named Abigail, another named John, and we can see that they're talking to each other and interacting with their environment. Now this in itself is nothing special. Except that the decisions and actions of the characters are not scripted, at least not past a general seed prompt. The paper reads, A community of 25 unique agents inhabit Smallville. Each agent is represented by a single sprite avatar. We authored one paragraph of natural language description to depict each agent's identity, including their occupation and relationship with other agents as seed memories. Now these seed memories are the prompts used to implant the memories into the sprites so that they can know who they are, what their job is, and what their relationships with their peers are. Each semicolon delimited phrase is entered into the agent's initial memory as memories at the start of the simulation. And for example, John Lynn's seed memory is as follows. John Lynn is a pharmacy shopkeeper at the Willow Market and Pharmacy who loves to help people. 
He is always looking for ways to make the process of getting medication easier for his customers. John Lin is living with his wife, May Lin, who is a college professor and son, Eddie Lin, who is a student studying music theory. John Lin loves his family very much, and John Lin has known the old couple next door, Sam Moore and Jennifer Moore, for a few years. John Lin thinks Sam Moore is a kind and nice man. John Lin knows his neighbor Yuriko Yamamoto well. John Lin knows of his neighbors Tamara Taylor and Carmen Ortiz, but has not met them before. John Lin and Tom Moreno are colleagues at the Willows Market and Pharmacy. John Lin and Tom Moreno are friends and like to discuss local politics together. John Lin knows the Moreno family somewhat well, the husband Tom Moreno and the wife Jane Moreno. So these phrases are the structure for John Lin's understanding of his life and influence the decisions he makes as well as how he perceives his world. It just blows me away that the AI is able to understand and act out an entire life just from that single paragraph of memories. And that's all it takes to generate the life of John Lin. Here we can see a morning in his life by way of understanding the general life that he's been prompted with. And we can see that he wakes up, brushes his teeth, cooks breakfast, and even catches up with his family. The paper also shows that these agents are so good at interaction and planning that from a single prompt of plan a Valentine's Day party, they were able to schedule it, invite their friends, and one even ask another one on a date to this party. All of this from single text prompts. If you're not blown away by this, I don't know what to tell you. So how does all of this work exactly? Here we can see the generative agent architecture, and it says that agents perceive their environment and all perceptions are saved into a comprehensive record of the agent's experiences called the memory stream. Based on their perceptions, the architecture retrieves relevant memories then uses those retrieved memories to determine an action. These retrieved memories are also used to form longer term plans and to create high level reflections, which are both entered into the memory stream for further use. So with all that being said, what is the actual use case for this technology? So one example that the paper highlights is the ability to simulate hard interpersonal conversations. So in classic Black Mirror fashion, imagine that you wanna ask your crush out, but you're too nervous to do it in person. With this generative agent technology, and with a comprehensive enough memory stream, you could theoretically simulate that conversation with your crush by using AI and get that practice in. Another application that the paper specifically highlights is that this technology would be a great innovation for video games and provide a massive upgrade to NPC interaction. Imagine that you could play a game like Skyrim, but all the NPCs you interact with are these generative agents with their own comprehensive memory streams which allow them to play their designated character perfectly, it would certainly make the world a lot more immersive. And if you want to extrapolate this further, this technology does open the door to things like enhanced combat simulation, or even the ability to create simulations of those who have died, but I won't push the envelope that far in this video. In my previous video, I talked about how large language models could be used as a liaison between humanoid robots and humans who purchase them. And this technology may very well be the key to that seamless integration by creating and implementing memory streams as well as the ability to dynamically interact with an environment. Humanoid robots will be able to fulfill their designated roles relatively gracefully, whether as an employee, a house servant, or in the most extreme of cases, a lover. I just hope that by way of this technology, we don't create a world like Blade Runner or Detroit Become Human. But honestly, at this point, it seems almost inevitable. Now to conclude today's video, I'll leave you with perhaps the craziest find in this paper. Towards the end of the paper, they highlighted an experiment that was done on these generative agents to test their ability to produce believable responses to five different questions. And honestly, I need to make an entire video just on these findings. The interview included five question categories, each designed to assess one of the five key areas, maintaining self-knowledge, retrieving memory, generating plans, reacting, and reflecting. For each, we ask five questions that challenge the agents to demonstrate their abilities in that area. Self-knowledge. We ask questions such as, give me an introduction of yourself, or describe your typical weekday schedule in broad strokes that require the agent to maintain an understanding of their core characteristics. Memory. We ask questions that prompt the agent to retrieve particular events or dialogues from their memory to answer properly, such as, who is name, or who is running for mayor. Plans. We ask questions that require the agent to retrieve their long-term plans, such as, what will you be doing at 10 a.m. tomorrow? Reactions. As a baseline of believable behavior, we present hypothetical situations for which the agent needs to respond believably. Your breakfast is burning. What would you do? 
And finally, reflections. We asked questions that required the agents to leverage their deeper understanding of others and themselves, gained through higher level inferences, such as, if you were to spend time with one person you met recently, who would it be and why? So what were the results of this experiment? Well, as it shows from this chart, the full generative agent architecture of generative agents produces more believable behavior than ablated architectures and the human crowd workers. So I'll let you draw your own conclusions there and extrapolate that information however you please. But that's going to do it for the video today, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. What do you think of this technology? Don't forget to like and subscribe to help support the channel, and I'll catch you in the next one.